Welcome back to the podcast, everyone. I'm your host, Tamara. Today, we are exploring another genre of reading, which is a graphic novel. If you would like to see this in video format, head on over to Patreon and sign up and you can see our faces and see the things we're showing on the screen without commercial breaks. If you're listening on the Spreaker app by signing up as a supporter, you too have access to after shows and other exclusive content and audio only. So if you prefer all video things, including vlogs, you'll need to check out Patreon instead. You can also join me and my two co-hosts over on the Book Clubs app for even more bookish chats. Please subscribe and like the podcast wherever you're listening. If you'd like to reach out to me, you can find me pretty much everywhere at Shelf Addiction. Joining me today is feature co-host Casey from Heart Full of Ink. Welcome back, Casey. Hello, hello. I'm so excited to be here. Yes, as always. Tell everyone where they can find you online. You can find me on Facebook at Heart Full of Ink, on Instagram at Casey underscore Heart Full of Ink, or at my website, heartfullofink.com. Okay, so before we get started, we, of course, want to remind you that with all book chats, we talk full spoilers, Mm -hmm. so you've been warned. And in this case, because we are talking about a world that we are very familiar with, you should expect spoilers for every book. Anything could come up. Mm -hmm. So if you are not caught up, it's not our fault. (laughs) We told you. (laughs) Warning you now, everything is fair game. Today, we are talking about Moon Call, the graphic novel, volume one, issues one through four. The original work was written by Patricia Briggs, adapted by David Lawrence, illustrated by Amelia Wu and Zach Matheny, published March 1st, 2011 by Dynamite Entertainment. And this is also available in Kindle format. The volume is 128 pages. Casey, would you kindly read the synopsis? Mercy Thompson inhibits two worlds without truly belonging to either. To the human inhabitants of the Tri-Cities, she's an oddity, a fiercely independent woman who repairs cars for a living. To the town's darker residents, werewolves, vampires, and fae, she's a walker, a last of her kind magical being with the power to become a coyote. Mercy warily straddles the fine line dividing our everyday world from the darker dimension until a boy mauled by vicious werewolves and running for his life appears at her door. Now her two worlds are about to collide. Outnumbered and outmuscled, can Mercy possibly save the boy or even herself? Okay, so first... Mm -hmm. Earlier this year, we did graphic audio. That was your first yes. experience. This is my first experience with a graphic novel. So we chose to do this one because it was something we were familiar with. Mm-hmm. And, okay, so let me just say high level. I liked it. Mm-hmm. High level, I liked oh, it. Oh, good, good, good. Um, It took me quite a bit to get into it like maybe 25 pages Mm -hmm. because I had to really stretch myself and kind of read it differently Mm -hmm. and honestly what helped me was my husband he reads a lot of comics Mm -hmm. so I was complaining about the lack of words (laughs) as one does with a graphic novel and he's like but it's the pictures tell you the story instead of the words like the words are there Mm -hmm. but All the little things that you think you need are in the pictures. I said, okay, let me refocus, Mm -hmm. right? So I did. I kind of took a step back and I was trying to read it with some of the, with the words, but looking at the pictures and I did kind of investigate all the pictures, which helped. Yeah. Oh yeah. But I also liked that it was super fast. I did this in like an hour, Mm -hmm. an hour and a half maybe. Yeah. It's short. It's a very fast read. Especially because we know Moon called the book so well. So we know what's going on. And that helped me also. Yeah. Because, okay, so let's just first thing, cover art. I love the cover art. It's mm-hmm. very beautiful. Mm-hmm. And then I was curious because Kevin was like, where did you get this graphic novel? He's like, you, why are you reading this? Because, you know, <laughs> I never have them. So I was explaining to him the story. And then I went and got the regular book. And I was like, oh, you know what? They're not too far off. Mm-hmm. Like, they're in the wheelhouse. Yeah. Mercy looks like so- somewhat similar. Somewhat similar. Until you get inside. And then her hair color <sighs> changes. And she's... I nitpick. I'm so sorry. I nitpick. Yeah, her hair looks very brown. Yeah, it's like almost blonde in some scenes. And I'm like, she has black hair. 
like yeah her hair changes completely this yeah Who, did she dye her hair what is this it's so different you know, from the front cover it is very different but the front cover it's darkness yeah in here and a lot okay so one of the critiques i have is this yellowing mm -hmm. of all of the scenes the yellowing of the scenes doesn't help and a, mm -mm. most of the pages look like that yeah and of course the past is always like Grade. black and white yeah. or sepia i guess yeah it sepia. it's not really black and white i don't know i like the pages where they're more purples mm -hmm. and grays but Blues still when they're out in these, the forest yeah her hair looks a little darker in these ones but it's still like a it's Still reddish black. blonde almost at times and i'm like that's can you not yeah keep like her this hair one she's straight. in the forest yeah and it's snowing her hair is very much red yeah or or brown yeah like i don't know it's strange they gave Those charles black hair and his hair stays black the whole time So, okay, so you guys can't see these photos we're showing <laughs> if you're listening, but we're flipping through this graphic novel. Mm -hmm. And one thing that kind of threw me is I get to this page and there's this picture and we haven't been introduced to him yet in the novel. No. And I'm like, is this supposed to be Sam or Charles? But I think it's Charles. It's Charles because yeah. you see Sam in a little bit and who is this Sam? <laughs> like, what the hell? So we get this huge full page photo of him before we even meet him in the book. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm like, why are they putting this here? We don't even know who he is yet, supposedly. I think it's supposed to be the cover. So like each chapter has a new cover. And that was kind of the cover for this. No, I this think, is the cover. Or, oh, that's this the This was on the back of the cover because this says on the front, issue three cover. Oh, And then okay. behind it, it has Charles. And, like, each issue does have its own cover, which yeah. is interesting. You hear me flipping pages. Sorry, guys. So, this first one, issue one cover by Brett Booth. So, he's someone else that did some art. I guess so they're just showing you a, a character, because for issue two, we have Mercy here. But then you flip the page, and it's, um, what's his name? Mac. Yeah. Mac. Yeah. yeah. Because, yeah, issue two cover is Mercy, mm -hmm. which it tells us, and then it's Mac on the back. But we met him, so that makes sense. Yeah. Strange. I don't know. Um, so, is this normal? Is this usual for... Um, uh, I read a handful, and by a handful, I mean, like, maybe three a year, so I'm not an expert by any means. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember this happening in any other book. I think this was a stylistic choice. Mm -hmm. um, I could be way more common, and I just don't know. Hmm. But, yeah, it was weird to bring up Charles before we meet him. Yeah, it's weird. Because as a person... Now, what I would have liked to know, mm -hmm. if someone has read this... And liked it without knowing the story. Probably. Because there are a Be lot of graphic novel readers who just read graphic novels and they don't read the full story. So I almost want to try again with something I'm not familiar with. Mm -hmm. Because I feel like my mind was filling the blanks. Oh, yes. Um. So... Would I enjoy a graphic novel for something I don't know that I have no history of and still feel like I got a complete story? Yes, because if it's done right, if it's done well, they are telling you a full story and you feel like maybe there are some missing details, but it's like watching an episode of a TV show, right? If like mm -hmm. a one hour episode tells you a whole story, you get that in like a graphic novel right it's not fully fleshed out but it's there so in this case do you feel like they told a complete story from this part that it's only one through four yeah, it's so only one stopped. through four it definitely felt like a summary to me just because like we've read moon called a dozen times in my life or <laughs> yeah. I've, I've read it so much that I was like, okay, yeah, no, I see how they're moving these scenes around. I know exactly what they're cutting out. They summarized this long thing into like three 
sentences. Um, I don't yeah. feel like I really knew Mercy the same way that I know her in the books, but you kind of get the the gist of who she is, right? Like even the beginning when they open with the Grey Lords, I'm like, the fuck? Why is this at the beginning? I'm confused. Yeah, I'm like, that what was is just a, like random. Why is this here? Here's some Fey stuff going on, and then it switches. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's very strange. So you get the Grey Lord page, and then it switches, and then we're instantly at the the part you know where she's helping Mac and the mm-hmm. guys are outside trying to grab him. Um and then we go back into time. I'm like, wait, why is this starting here? And then it goes back. Yeah. No, it was confusing, but I think they did that to start well one start with the Fae to be like, hey, there's magic in this world and then didn't really flesh that out. And then they started with the attack to be like, hey, this is gonna be so exciting. Mm-hmm. There's action and violence coming. Whereas, you know, if they start with the way the book starts, standing in the garage, working on the car, Max shows up, it, it's a very slow start. So they did the action to hook you in, but it was I don't that know. That makes sense. I got like I said, I after the first part was a rough start. Mm-hmm. It was. And I also don't like that these pages aren't numbered. Mm-mm. No. So I can't tell how many pages. So I had to guess because they're not. <laughs> yes. So, um, but I think that first part, I was kind of so kind of unclear about what the narrator or author was trying to do. I'm like, why is it in this order? Mm-hmm. Why does it look like this? I was like distracted by the little things that probably shouldn't have been distracted by. And so I was able to kind of oh, refocus. Yeah. No, I, I was nitpicking the tiniest details and i was even driving myself crazy at one point because okay so mercy's a mechanic and she constantly like even in book eight book nine she's always talking about how her fingers are stained black and she's always scrubbing them with the super soap and you know then there's a panel in here where she's reaching for a phone and her nails are nice and pretty and pink and they're actually kind of long so they look like maybe fake nails and i was just like the and mercy fuck is would this? never wear fake nails never ever and like i was like are they trying to pink okay so fake here we go. nails that's mercy's hand Oh my gosh, you know what? You're right. That's Mercy's <laughs> hand. And I'm like, are they trying to show that she has claws? But those aren't claws. Those are no, human fingernails. Like, those aren't her coyote claws. Those are human fingernails. They're long and they're pretty and they're pink. And her fingers are not stained black. And that just driving me crazy. And it's like, I, I need to let this go. Be, they should be short and short and straight. Th- yeah like you know straight cut across mm-hmm. you know like people who play piano or something yeah somebody Short. who works with <laughs> their the hands notes. fixing mm-hmm. cars is not gonna have pretty nails like this because those nails will break every two seconds like this is something she complains mm-hmm. about constantly through the books yeah and then just right. to have those pretty pink fingernails i was like that it's i this is driving me crazy i need to walk away for a minute that's fair and the skin tones are kind of weird, but like you said, it could have just been the yellow shading, but it, it was weird. Her hair was constantly different. Her fingernails are different. Her hairstyle, it looks like... She has like the biggest, the fakest boobs ever that don't move. They're always like so hairstyle. perky. And it's... I don't like... She's got this lipstick on with mm-hmm. a bunch of... Like, looks like sh- eyeshadow or something. Oh, yeah. She's so pretty. Always wearing makeup. Has, like, the winged eyeliner at one point. Yeah, all the gloss on her lips. I'm like, ew. That's not Mercy. That's not exactly right. Yeah, there are some things that aren't right with Mercy's character. Like, people... But if the author, Patricia Briggs, was involved with this project, right? She is involved with it, but I don't know how much she really had at the end of the day like how much say she had at the end of the day because they changed a lot Mm. adam looked like a weird mafia dude yeah he did he looked like a gangster yeah i'm like what the hell that is not how adam looks no Mm -mm. Mm -mm. no it wasn't cute at all i think samuel like doesn't even have a neck he just has massive muscles and a short little stump between his head and his shoulders I was like, what you is know, this? I feel like Z is 
kind of what I would expect. Yeah, Z was about the best character. He's almost, yeah. yeah. I do like the wolves, though. They do the wolves pretty well. The wolves are pretty, yeah. (laughs) She gets out there and... What's her face tries to catch her? Leah. So rude. Leah's a rude ass. <laughs> and you know, it's funny. I still, even knowing Leah's story now that we're so far, mm-hmm. I still be like, this ho. This bitch. <laughs> exactly. Just because you have a tragic backstory doesn't excuse all the bullshit. I know. You're still awful. You are. You're Mercy was awful. a child. You didn't need to be a bitch to her. I know. Like, oh my gosh. Like, everyone looks so bad. Like, this is Samuel right here, right? With this short hair. Mm-hmm. And you said he had no neck. No fucking neck. Look at that. <laughs> Look at that little stump. What a mess. That's like uh. his shoulder muscles are just moving his head like, around. Why do they look like this? I don't know. Yeah, you didn't get the character depth and development. Like, they had their moment where Mercy apologized for leaving, but that didn't really have any sort of impact on me as a reader because I don't know their history at this point. And, you know, in the book, that's 100 pages in. We know Mercy so well. She's talked about her relationship with Sam and Bran and all of this. Like, we've gotten so much more detail in the book. Whereas here we're like, oh, yeah, she was here and now she left and now she's back and now she's apologizing. But yeah, I'm like, why are you? Yeah. Like, it didn't make sense. And I think that was part of the problem with this book was that they were just summarizing instead of telling a story. Like, if they were just telling their own story, they could have gone more detail. So it feels like maybe they knew they would only have so much mm-hmm. allowed to them as far as space and like issues or whatever. So they tried to cram everything they could as quickly Mm -hmm. but just touching on things right yeah not really expanding on anything uh it's like the cliff notes version although they did expand a lot on mac they focused a lot on mac Mm -hmm. even at the end yeah oh yeah it was a special you know little a whole lot of story for him yeah like we get a whole backstory it was only a couple pages, but it was pretty flushed out. I mean, it was the night he got ass- assaulted, Killed. basically. Yeah. yeah, it was a bonus chapter. I don't know. They spent a lot of time kind of trying to develop Mac, I think. Mm-hmm. Even though he died. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah. Um, I don't know. Like, I even looked at the second one because I have the second volume mm-hmm. here. And I almost started it, but I was really busy. In the back, they have a lot more drawings of act, um, not actors, <laughs> of other characters. characters. And then in the back, again, they have another bonus chapter. Mm-hmm. And I think the bonus chapter is also about Mac, I think. Really? I think. Oh, there's another last call afterward by the... um. Is this a bonus? Let me look. There it is. Bonus chapter. Yeah. The wolves, fangs, and claw right at me. I fight, but there's too many. Yeah, this is Mac. I thought it was. The beast within is why he's caged up. Oh, geez. And then he kind of (laughs) turns. Yeah, it's about Mac. So even in the second book, they continue Mac. Why? He shouldn't be in the second volume at all. Yeah, no, he died halfway through this book. And you're not going to believe. So in the end of the first book, you know how they send Charles, uh, his enforcer off Charles mm-hmm. off to go investigate that pack because mm-hmm. we've heard other shit about that pack. But in this one, he meets Anna. Oh, that's why they brought him in. What have they done to you? Who are you? My name's Anna. It's going to be hard to explain what's happening, but I'll try. I think huh. Anna actually met him. Yeah, she did. I mean, off page, we yeah, never we see never it, saw it, but we hear hear about yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. So I yeah. guess that is what this is. So she meets Anna, and of course, Anna is from the Alpha and Omega. So if you guys mm-hmm. aren't familiar with those, spoiler, spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, Anna's a spinoff, but they talk about Anna in the later Mercy books, so it's okay. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, they have to because those worlds collide, right? Which so, I think we're getting more of in the next book. Yeah. I think it's when Adam and Mercy go up to Montana. I think that's the plot of this next book that we're getting this summer. I think. Yay! 
<laughs> Not a spoiler because I don't know. I just think. <laughs> yeah, we're getting that. So we're going to dive back in. Um, well, let's finish this and we'll yeah, continue yeah, yeah. to talk about that. So, yeah, I noticed just from that, I'm like, okay, so we have Mac again in the second volume. But this is it. They didn't do any more. Yeah, I don't think they ever did any more. And this didn't finish the story, I don't think. I don't, I don't think, think they did. sold very well because they have the homecoming book, which I got from the library. So it's Mercy Homecoming. And this takes place 10 years before Moon Called. And it's not what I remember their history being, but I need to go back oh, and check. Maybe it did finish. How did Moon Call end? Do you remember? Um, They kill the guy. Uh huh. It's what's his name's son has been making the drugs, and they kill right. him. They save Adam's family. Um, was the end the date? Was their date the the end? No, um, I think the date was the next book. I think he, they just promised a date. Okay, because they have a date at the end of this book. At the very I end, think there's that's a date. The second book. And look, they even schmoosh at the end or maybe they do that in the first book it's been so long i need to reread it i know i uh, feel like i want to reread it now but i'm like i, I have when? so much to do <laughs> i don't have time i know i don't have the time maybe they did because i i kind of remember like she kissed him and samuel was inside and he opened the door maybe that was the end of moon called not bloodbound like i'm thinking i'm not sure god damn it I, I need know, to reread like these it books. starts to kind of all mesh. It does. You know? Oh no, the very last scene was with Stefan in the book. In the actual book, the very last scene was scene with Stefan. He asked her how she broke her arm. Huh. Oh, okay. So I showed you right before we started recording, but I want to show everybody else who's watching in uh, this version of the book. Let me find the big picture of Stefan. Because this this is wild. Oh my gosh. Another Where horrific. Is it? Oh goodness. Hold on. They don't number the pages here either, so I have to flip through. Here we go. Stefan. That looks like a Disney villain. <laughs> These eyebrows are insane. Disney villain. With lipstick on and everything. Yes. The brows, the lips, the sharp teeth. The, the Like, this is them in his mystery machine and then close up of his face. And I'm just like, no. That's this the is not my one. Stefan. Let me Stephon. see if I can find it right quick. Oh, you know what? I will never let go how Patricia Briggs would not set the record straight. It's Stefan or Stefan. <laughs> Look, so I don't know. I think I might have told you back when I met her mm -hmm. a couple years ago, I asked her, I said, Look, can you tell me the correct pronunciation? Because mm -hmm. I say Stefan and my co host and friend says Stefan. She's like, Well, he doesn't matter. He doesn't care which way you call him. No! It's whatever you want it to be. I'm like, No! You you dare you? the right answer just, just set it straight i don't care if i'm wrong just set it straight but she would not she would not she was like it doesn't matter <laughs> i think she's no. going on tour again this summer so mm -hmm. i i want to try and find her if she comes anywhere close to me I maybe might. if you ask her she'll yes. tell you I will or maybe she'll her. say the same thing <laughs> maybe she'll say the same thing to you too i don't know Cause I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. I really thought I was going to have a victory there and she gave me nothing. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I do like my graphic novel experience, mm -hmm. but I'm not running to pick up another one. This. Do you think it was a bad representation? Kind of like with the graphic audio. Yeah. I thought the one we picked was a bad, bad choice. Cho like it, it's this was good a bad because choice? it's Patricia Briggs, but I've definitely read better. Like I read Laura Olympus and I think that's really cute. And it's way more fleshed out than this, the Mercy mm -hmm. Thompson series. Um, I've read a few others that feel way more fleshed out because they were written specifically as graphic novels, like they were developed uh, to be a story told as a graphic mm -hmm. novel. So there's a lot more character development and thought put into it. And it's not just a summary 
of a much longer story. But that makes me wonder if all book adaptations into graphic novels feel this way because they're book adaptations versus something that this was original it was originally Mm -hmm. a graphic novel um so some of the other graphic novels that i've seen like for cassandra clare or v.e schwab their graphic novels are thick they're like 200 Mm -hmm. 300 pages long this one Mm -hmm. is barely 100 pages and it is only Mm -hmm. half the story but it's so rushed I don't know. I haven't tried hmm. any other book adaptations. Um, I would be curious to see. Because, you know, I was mentioning um, to my husband, I said, well, maybe I could try the Walking Dead comics because those were original. Yeah. But he doesn't think I should do it because I know too much about the show. Mm-hmm. So I'll be comparing it to the show. Um, so he thinks I should pick something I know nothing about. Yeah, I think we should try this again with something totally new that was made mm-hmm. to be a graphic novel, not an adaptation of anything, and see mm-hmm. kind of like how we want to retry with the graphic audio. Yeah. So I feel like we failed essentially in both yes. endeavors because we tried to go with things we were familiar with and mm-hmm. it didn't go right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> which sucks like I, I had such high hopes because it's patricia briggs and mercy and then i'm just like what are these fingernails what is this blonde hair why mm-hmm. is adam brown <laughs> like mm-hmm. what is happening here why is adam not sexy yeah why is What's adam not sexy oh that's what I was he should be he's he supposed to be sexy books. oh yeah yeah i mean hell even samuel's supposed to be cute uh, He's not cute. This is Adam in this book. So, less mafia. But still... Mm, they toned it down a little bit. Yeah, Adam is so Which one? <laughs> reserved and old school. Mm-hmm. And like, just like that boy next door, boyish cute. Like This one came out in 2009. So this one came okay. out before, like three years before they did Moon Call. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, and the I'm gonna keep the, reading um, Mercy books, but I don't think I'll ever read another. Uh, is the author the same? Is it the same at guy who did the uh, adaptation? Lawrence, da- yeah, David Lawrence, I think. Is yeah, Dave, written by Patricia Briggs and David Lawrence, painted by Francis Tassi and Amelia Wu. Okay, so Amelia Wu has some of the same. Some of the same, yeah. You know, so, but there's a different um illustrator okay yeah no like here here are wolves they did a great job with the werewolves yeah the, they look good but then there's mm. pictures of mercy and i'm just like what what is this why does she look like this why does she look like this why is her <laughs> boob like this big and just sitting right here on her chest she that's is not the how main boobs work character she is the main character get the main character right mm-hmm. And the fact that this book came out so far before, Mm -hmm. they could clearly see this woman has long hair. Yep, long black Black hair. Hair. Mm -hmm. Not this other. And the cover looks good, but once you, like you said, once you open it, you're like, hmm. What is this? This this looks like a different person. Yeah, this this is a different person. (laughs) She's blonde here. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a quick break, you guys. Uh, By listening to the commercials, you are supporting the podcast. Don't forget to check out the book review journal available right now on Amazon. Please pick up a copy. I would love you so much for doing it. (laughs) And when we get back, we will continue this conversation. We will rate it and we will talk about what's next for the series. Stay with us. All right. Welcome back. Do you have a bunch of more things to cover or should we just... I mean, I can nitpick it, but I don't want to nitpick it. (laughs) I don't want to either. I mean, honestly, I feel like he did okay with the story Mm -hmm. overall. Yes. But again, I have to say, I'm not sure someone who's brand new to this world is going to feel satisfied Mm -hmm. with this, which is probably why they didn't do more of them. Yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's if I was going to introduce somebody to this world and they're like, I'm not a big book reader. Should I try the graphic novel? I'd say no. 
Mm-hmm. No, just start with a book. Even if you have to slog through it, like check out the audiobook instead. Book over graphic novel, hands down. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the audiobook of these are very good mm-hmm. as well. Mm hmm. Very, very good. So if you're not a book reader, then definitely check out the, the audio book. Audio books. They're very good. And honestly, we've reread these so many times. These hold up. They do. Unlike some other stuff. Unlike other series. <laughs> these hold up. Yes. Decade over a decade later. Oh yeah. Two decades later. Oh yeah. Almost. No, I'm I'm sitting here right now. Like, can I just take the day off no i have to work but like i want to reread I it i would love to just dive into mm-hmm. this but i have literally so much responsibility i know i have a I'm to-do list the adult. size of my arm and i'm like yes. i don't have time to sit down and reread moon called but i want to <laughs> but that will be a great like jumping off to talk about when the new stuff mm-hmm. comes out so the new book comes out in june in June, but we should have it before then, yeah. right? Let's not brag too much. Let's not <laughs> torture torture our fans too badly. Oh, uh, well, we're going to get copies from the publisher. Yay. And I know people are reading Lo- uh, Winter Lost right now mm-hmm. on NetGalley. Um, NetGalley. But we want the books. Oh, yes. <laughs> And she's going to send us the actual books. I think she's going to give us... Um, finished copies too we're not gonna have ours because the last couple ones we got were finished copies Mm -hmm. i think Mm -hmm. so i'm excited so we will wait until the finished copies come out and then we'll dive in definitely but then we have to decide are we gonna reread some of the are we gonna like just maybe read the beginning the last book and then the new book like we have to be strategic we can't reread i can't reread 15 books no we can't re- we can't do it i so do i'm trying to want to we set ourselves up for success i don't know i i don't i genuinely um my brain is stuck on moon called right now so i'm trying to let that go at the very mm-hmm. least at the very least i want to reread the last two mercy books and the last Alpha and Omega book, because that was such a pivotal moment. And I'm pretty sure that book is going to play a huge role in this plot line. So I want to see kind of the lead up from Mercy's point of view, then see what Anna and Charles are doing and then get into the book. So at least those three books, my brain I wants to do so much good more, but place to start, honestly. And that's like not a, a small amount of reading. Yeah, no, that's three books. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll do some, uh, like live reading sessions for Patreon people, and I don't know. Ooh, we could do fun. Yeah, we could do Maybe. some reading sessions and just chit chat. Um, I don't know. Maybe Patricia Briggs fans. Yes, <laughs> if you are listening, and you want this, come on over to Patreon. And send me a message on Patreon. Mm-hmm. Because Tell us we'll what do books it. you want us to reread or what you think we should reread. Should we yeah. do more than three? I don't know if we have time for that, but honestly, I don't have time. I probably won't be able to read much of anything until we're actually in the month of May, probably the second week of May. Oh, same. And then by that time, hopefully, my school will be almost to done and i could just pound out some books real fast because these are fast <laughs> they reads are to fast me. reads and we've read them before so we kind of know what's coming we know what's going mm-hmm. on but i just want that refresher because mm-hmm. a lot of shit has gone down in the tri-cities over the last several books it has and it's almost to the point where i almost want someone to make me a, a chart yes <laughs> If I had Someone time, chart. I would do it. And I'm sure the wiki page is a great resource, oh, yeah. but it's definitely not as fun as no. having a diagram with a with a, a flow a chart line on the bottom <laughs> and who knows who and who got with who back in the day that resulted in this. Mm-hmm. And now we have 
like. <laughs> and who turned evil? And why are they evil? And what's going exactly. on? And is this person mm-hmm. actually evil? Are they just faking being evil? Because uh-huh. that's possibly what's going on with one character. Yeah. And yes. we probably won't <laughs> get much of that in this book if I... If no. what I think is happening is happening, but that's a whole like new realm of bullshit that's going to go down. Oh, they'll come back. Briggs will come back around too. Oh, it. definitely. Oh, Trust. yeah, she'll come back. Oh, she will. Mm-hmm. But I think we're we're moving away from him and going into the Fey world and dealing with the scary Fey stuff that's been going on. And Anna and Charles have been dealing with a lot of this. Yeah. And now they have even more to deal with. And yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm so excited. I just want to sit here and read. So, you know, we didn't give an official rating, but I do want to give a rating because Goodreads requires one and I do want to put one on Goodreads. So let's go ahead and rate this. Volume one of Moon Called, the graphic novel. What did you rate it? I'm going with my gut and this is just an emotional rating and I'm giving it three stars. Okay, I'm gonna give it a four. I mean, on the, yeah, like it, on the strength of this of the world in the universe, it it's a good book. It's a good. I just get I'm caught up on these little details that are annoying me so much, and so it's just that visceral. Like I can't get past this, and this is absolutely a me thing. Um, yeah, but I don't know. I it's like not bad. The- I just I'm annoyed. Like, I liked so much about it. Like, I liked the experience overall. Mm-hmm. Like, like I said, the experience was great. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But, yes, lots to nitpick. So lots much of to things nitpick. Wrong. And I want to um, shut my brain off, but I can't. I have a little bit of problem with even how the storytelling goes a little bit. But, yeah. But because we know the world so much, that kind of helped me. Mm-hmm understand everything i mean yes i understood the story i can see the storytelling and all that good stuff but just like on a emotional personal level it just didn't hit for me yeah kind of the way the alona andrews graphic audio didn't hit for you Mm -hmm. that's how i'm feeling here Mm -hmm. love patricia briggs love moon called we'll keep reading and supporting and all the good stuff but just no thank you I'm walking yeah. away from graphic novels from her. Yeah. Um. Well, I guess by David Lawrence. Yeah. You don't like David Lawrence's yeah. style because you know he's the one. After reading his little um, afterward at the back of the oh, book, I didn't read he that. Talks. Of, oh, I did read it. You know, he kind of talks about it was hard to kind of find the balance of what to tell and what not to tell. You know, yeah. and talking about how. And it's true, you know, at the beginning of the book, we get this whole world building, mm-hmm. right? We get a lot of world the building and, and walla walla for two sentences and then it's nope. Yeah, and that's not what he says, quote, but it's not what this medium is built for. Like lots mm-hmm. of good heavy dialogue, lots of that. Mm-hmm. That's not what this does. Yeah. So it's like you really have to be in a different mindset mm-hmm. to enjoy it properly i think yeah i think it's kind of like a right brain left brain thing, i think so you know? i think so yeah so I, while i did like again i'm not trying to run out and mm-hmm. read another one right away um definitely not with this i think i will finish it because i bought it uh-huh. but i don't know when when you have a free and hour i do want to try and i do want to try another graphic novel but like you said it will be something neither one of us knows it's going to be something that the intention was to be a graphic novel to start with yeah and we can i can be able to say better Mm -hmm. from there yeah Mm. yeah yeah well now it's got me wanting to dive back into all of these books like right now same same I'm so excited for the next book. I know, me too. And now I have to like do not fun stuff. I know. <laughs> I know. I have to go work. Oh. Well, this has been a fun break. It has That's been. Sure. It was a fun break. It's always fun to talk to you about this stuff. I, I know, same. Although I was thinking like, wow, this is going to be kind of lackluster because I don't know what I thought I was expecting, but I just I'm like, how much content can we get? 
<laughs> well, we got like almost 40 minutes, so I think we're good. I know. Okay, I think we're done. Yes. You guys, if you have enjoyed this graphic novel or despised this graphic novel, let us know your thoughts on it. Feel free to leave a comment on um, Spotify or hit me up on Discord or wherever we connect. <laughs> and uh, that's it for now. Yeah. And we'll catch you guys next time. Thanks for tuning in. Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Did you enjoy today's episode? If so, please head over to Apple Podcast or Spotify and leave a positive five-star review. It's a simple action that makes a big difference. You can also like this episode on your favorite podcast player or share it with your fellow bookworm friends on social media. Joining the Shelf Addiction Patreon family is another way to support us. For as little as $2 a month, you can help our team create even more amazing bookish content. If Patreon isn't your thing, consider becoming a supporter on the Spreaker app for just $5 a month and gain access to exclusive audio-only content. You can find me everywhere, including Instagram, X, and TikTok under the handle Shelf Addiction. Join our book club of the same name on the book club's website and app where we discuss all things bookish and more in a safe space. The Shelf Addiction podcast is a part of the Nerdy Maven Network. Thanks for tuning in.